Call the committee uh, to order. Councilors, before we get into the agenda, a couple things. Going into uh, next legislative session, year 2015, we have uh, five items uh, that are on the table uh, that we can deal with uh, at that time, and we'll deal with the new chair of the Finance Committee at that time as well. We also have three matters before finance that have been postponed, uh, and they're not before us as well. So we should address those, in my humble opinion, in January, and we, uh, we should uh, either keep them on the table or take them off, one or the other. But there's an agenda that was uh, drafted, a summary of what's postponed and what's tabled, and I think you each have that. Uh, councilors, uh, Council Monahan and Council Azak are running late tonight. They may not be able to join us here at the FinCon, but they will be here at 8 o'clock special meeting. And Council Barnes, I believe, is just flying uh, into the country uh, around this time, so she will not be joining us tonight. With that being said, Madam Chair. Order. Clerk. Transfer $10,000. From Parking Authority Personal Services part-time salaries other than overtime to purchase of services building and ground 7000 and from Parking Authority Personal Services part-time salaries other than overtime to electricity 3000 to cover costs of repairs to pay stations in the B lot and the replacement of electrical panels in the garage and to cover the anticipated shortfall in electrical costs due to increased usage and rate hikes. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Condon, Chief Financial Officer, and Robert Malley, Executive Director of Parking Garage. Good evening, Mr. Malley. Good evening. How are you? Very fine. Yourself? Good. Do you have a well, statement for the committee? No, not really. What we're, what we're trying to do is uh, transfer some money. Um, we had some unexpected uh, repair bills, uh, both to the panels in the garage and the, um, and the pay stations over in the B lot that need to be paid. Um, and in addition, we also had a repair to the tickets better in the garage. Uh, the total of uh, all the repairs is uh, slightly under ten thousand dollars. We had eleven thousand in that at the beginning of the budget year. And we have the extra money in part time due to uh, people leaving um, and replacements at lower, you know, at the first year rate instead of the top rate, and also one medical leave. So there's money extra in there. So what we're looking to do is transfer that money over. Thank you, Mr. Malley. Councils. Ooh. Motion to recommend favorably. Second. Motion made properly second. A favorable <clears throat> recommendation back to the full city council. All, all in favor, please raise your hands. All opposed, motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Thank Mayor. Thank you very much. Have a good holiday. Before we get into agenda item number two, uh, Madam Clerk, I want to recognize we have uh, the men and women, uh, the brothers and sisters of the union. Thank you for joining us here tonight in the chamber. We appreciate it. Can you cannot. I'm sorry. You're yeah. not an invited guest at this time. I apologize. Can't hear? You want us to speak up a little louder then? Absolutely, sir. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Madam Clerk, number two, please. Resolved that the City Council hereby request that a representative and or representatives of Aquaria appear before the Finance Committee to address questions pertaining to the desalinization water contract. Invited Moises Parante, General Manager, Aquaria Water, Rebecca McEnroe, PE Project Manager, Aquaria Water. I believe Mr. Parente is here. If you could step forward. Good evening. Mr. Chair. Uh, Councilor Sullivan. Thank you. Uh, members of the committee, as you may recall, I filed this resolve months and months and months ago, and it replicated a resolve that I filed last legislative session, uh, and that, that died because of the legislative uh, session terminated. Uh, but the, the gist of the resolve is the same. And uh, I know, Mr. Parente, you came before us uh, I believe uh, by my calculation about seven months ago, uh, six or seven months ago, uh, and, and my questions are still the same. And, and I, I, uh, I appreciate you coming here. I know a lot of times you're out of the country, but uh, I have to say I'm pretty uh, disappointed and dismayed again because even though it was six or seven months ago, at that time, and we can look at the record to reflect the minutes, I had requested documentation to be uh, provided to every member of this committee uh, from your organization. Your organization gets paid quite a bit of money from the city of Brockton and it's supposed to be a partnership. And as you may recall, one of my, uh, really the crust of my resolve was relative to proving the marketing measures and how you're marketing this because it is an asset. Uh, right now, you've been doing this for many, many years. The only customer you have is the city of Brockton. I'm not here to chastise you, but I, I, I'm a little disappointed due to the fact that and unless I'm the only one, I, I, I didn't get any materials that I've asked seven months ago. And I know uh, the last time I invited you, uh, last month, and I continue to do that every month, um, 
we, we had asked you to come and I had gotten an email indicating that someone from your organization would indeed come. And again, there was a no-show. So this time we were forced to send a certified green card and it was signed for. But ultimately, uh, the fact that you're here is a, is, is a step in the right direction, although about seven months too late. But I guess my question is, why weren't you able during that time to give us the materials that I simply requested that night? Well, first of all, let me apologize uh, for not being here, but uh, I was here actually, uh, I think, uh, a couple of months ago. I got invited. And, but no, uh, that, you were not invited that night. I was not well, they, they sent me an email and, and for some reason there was a miscommunication and, and, and the reason why they don't came the other, the other times is because I got the letter uh, actually after the meeting happened. So uh, that's the reason why I didn't show up on those, on those occasions. So I, I, I sorry. No, no, I, and again, I mean, your other colleague here based in Massachusetts at the plant is also being notified. But I guess, again, my question was, was, was simple. Under the terms of the contract, uh, there was a, a measure of marketing, and you had a, a legal obligation, and I would even say a fiduciary duty, to market it. And at that time, as you may recall, I had said, how do you market it? What are the brochures you use? Do you go to the MMA, which is the, the biggest conference of municipalities in the Commonwealth, and it's held in Boston? And you, you said no. And I said, could you please explain to us, uh, since we're the, the stalwarts of the money for the city of Brockton as a legislative body, how do you market it? Could you please give us the materials? And you assured me at that time, sir, that, okay, you could do that. And again, we, we don't have anything. I, I apologize. You're right. Uh, I brought actually some of the information you asked me last time. I'll send you, if you want to, I can send you personally the materials to your email. Uh, but, and I apologize if, there was, uh, if uh, you were expecting those, uh, those materials to be sent out uh, last time. But I, uh, I, I will do that uh, with, with no... Uh, uh, no question about it. No, and I, I appreciate that, but again, I mean, the fact that you're here without us having had the ability to review those materials before you appeared, I mean, there was a joke among us that no one was going to ever show up from Aquaria, uh, and the fact that you're here tonight is great, but again, we're at a disadvantage because you can recite certain marketings and certain statistics and facts, and we cannot validate those because it was not given to us prior to. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, you had said to us that you have tried to market it to different cities and towns. You've tried to. Um, put aside the fact that there's a proposal to buy the thing, which I have my own opinions on that, but, but it's easy to say, yes, we have been trying to market it. And I asked you that night, okay, at that time I was a town attorney in Randolph. You never marketed to Randolph. I know that for a fact. I know that for a fact. Um, and then you had indicated to us that you could not market it to cities or towns that are within a, a, a certain distance away from the actual pipeline itself. And I said, okay, I'm not an engineer, that sounds logical to me, but what about the ones that abut it, that are direct abutters to the pipeline from all the way to the origin to the ending here in the city of Brockton? And you had indicated to me, sir, that yes, okay, we have done that and, and we'll give you the information. And I said, who are the town managers? Who are the selectmen that you've been talking to? We need to validate that. And again, the fact that you're here tonight, I appreciate, but I don't appreciate the fact that we don't have the information because it's kind of a waste of everybody's time for you to be here tonight, in my humble opinion, because again, you could say you talked to Danny Murphy, the chair over in Easton, but I don't know if that's true. If you had told me that two weeks ago, I could have called Murphy up and asked him. So um, who, who have you in the last seven months since I saw you last and, and the committee saw you, who have you tried to market this or has there been no efforts to market it? On these past months, uh, well, I, I, I need to, uh, we have a control list of all the uh, people that we discuss this. I mean, we, we talk about this uh, and I can forward that to you as long, uh, along with the, uh, with the other information you requested and I failed to. But you can't you. reiterate to us or, or regurgitate to us today who it is that you've talked to? Well, we we are we talked to the uh, Rainham dog truck. Uh, I'm not sure when was this. Uh, I can I, I I need to double check the dates. Uh, I know we have an ongoing with the Tondon Casino, that they've been following up uh, on on that, but no towns lately. Uh, we've we've sent all the all the documentation that they need, and there's really no uh, no different position than the uh, uh, previous year. See, what I said to you three years ago, and I didn't mean it in any dis disrespectful way, but if I was you and I knew I was getting millions of bucks every single year from the city of Brockton, your number one and only customer, then what's the effort? What really, why am I going to try to market it, you know? And your response to me, and this was three years ago, your <coughs> response to me was, well, we'll be able to make more money that way. But since that time, sir, there's been no new customers, and every time you come before us, you say the same thing, I'll get you the materials. And after a while, 
we find it not just frustrating, we find it almost maddening that a simple question is, who have you marketed it to? How have you marketed it? And you had assured me that, okay, Counselor, when I come back before you again, I will give you the materials and how we market it. I mean, you don't have to be a salesman to know that when you sit before a potential customer, you somehow have to try to present your business and sell your business, right? Either a brochure or a summary or even a bio. And we don't have any of that. Well, as I told you on the, on the last meeting, uh, the, the reason why peop, the, ta the other towns are not interested is because of the filing of the Water Management Act. As I, as I mentioned before, uh, you have a limitation on the water per capita that the, uh, that the, uh, popul the people can take on the town when, when, when they join Aquaria. And that's the main reason why you know, people are not very interested on the, uh, on the project, to be honest with you. Uh, the city of Brockton went through that, and, uh, and you know there's been requirements uh, after uh, the plan went online, actually prior to the, the plan going online, that has actually uh, made the uh, uh, s uh, signing of the towns more difficult, to be honest. So uh, that's 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 the reason why why most of these, these towns are not interested on, on us. Is it, is it true, and I don't know if this is true, and I don't know if you're gonna share it with us, but is it true that you're losing water, uh, dollars based on the water? So the city of Brockton pays you X amount, but it's costing you more yes. relative to what the city of Brockton, that's a fact. Yes. So you're losing money. Yes. But yet there's a proposal to buy the thing for 88 million bucks, so. Uh, with that being said, I'm going to send it out back to you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, sir. Councilor Rodriguez. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Pont, how are you? Hi. Um, recently, there has been a lot of discussion in terms of the value of the plant, and I hope that, Mr. Chairman, you can be a little lenient so that I can try to get some of this information here. Um, let me just come out and basically ask you point blank. What was the cost to build this plant? How much did it cost you to build this plant? Uh, over $90 million. $90 million. And it is my understanding that the plant was sold a few years ago, a couple years no, ago? The, the company was sold. The company was bought by, right. so it was sold. By, uh, by another group, yes. And do you know what the purchase price was? No, there was no, oh, you mean for the whole company? If it was, if it was bought, they, they bought it for a price. Yeah, it was uh, over, I can, I can uh, confirm the figure, but it was over $300 million. For how many plants? Well, you have to look into how many were in concessions and how many are in operation and how many are in construction. So it's, it's different businesses within the company. But for how many plants were, when this company bought your company, there was a number of plants that they either in operation, proposed to be operating, future plans to be built. There was a, a number, a set number. Right. How much, how, what, what number was that? I can tell you that, I, I, can, I can tell you, but I, I cannot tell you tonight. Was it more than four? Uh, yes, probably. Yeah. More yeah, than four? Obviously, yes. And it was 300, but, uh, but 300 and what? Huh? 300 and what? I can confirm the number. I mean, I'm not uh, dealing with, I mean, that's, that's the, the prime company that sold the, uh, all the assets. So, so basically, they sold the assets for all these plants yes. that you had for 300 and something million dollars, right. and there was more than four plants. Yes, but you you are not considering also the, uh, the the debt that they were assuming the debt on the uh, on all the plants. As for instance, in Aquaria, there is obviously uh, a bank loan uh, as well as for other plants. I mean, in, uh, for instance, we have plants in uh, in Mexico where uh, we have a grant from the government, we have uh, a, a, a part that is being financed by, uh, by banks and part that is uh, financed by, by equity. So it's, it's uh, I mean, every single business is different, uh, to be honest with you, and you cannot just, uh, I, think, I, I think I understand where you're going, uh, just looking at the 88 versus the, uh, the sale value, but uh, you need to consider other factors into it. Well, well the, the issue I have with this is that Rumor has it, and if it's wrong, you can correct us, um, that the Brockton plant or the Dighton plant is one of the smallest plants as far as the pr production of water because there's actually some serious doubts, and I know that it, there were some questions asked here in this, in, this, in this particular setting asking whether or not that plant can sustain the production of 3.5 million gallons a day. We were told that, yes, it could. Come to find out, 
the plant didn't really produce three and a half million gallons a day for 30 days. For 30 days. Mm -hmm. we, we produced from June to, uh, to uh, mid-August, if I remember correctly. But not a three, three and a half million a ga in a gallons per day. Three and a half, yes. That's not... Well, the request I got some was for I got some information. I can, I mean, I can send you the, uh, the production rate for every single, every single day that, uh, that we had the, uh, the request for. No, I asked actually Mr. Condon this question the last time that we were discussing the purchasing or the, uh, the proposal that was being floated out here in terms of that plant's ability to produce the water that it claims that it can produce. And we were told that, yes, the plant produced 3.5 million gallons per day times 30 days when, in fact, it wasn't true. It was actually uh, the request for more than 30, was more than 30 days. But it did not produce 3.5 million per day, as it was it, basically stated. That's what I'm saying. It, uh, I, can, I can show you the data. I mean, it, it's shared actually with the, uh, work, uh, with the water department. So, uh, that, well, I mean, I don't have anything to hide in there. Well, uh, the thing is, uh, this information that I'm telling you, I actually got it from the folks within the water department that said there's the plant nowhere near produced 3.5 million gallons a day for 30 days. Are we talking about the last uh, request? This or are we past talking about 30 days, this past summer, whatever the, the there date was, a was in the summer. Uh, two weeks ago, and it was for 2 million gallons, and that was delivered. No, no, I'm talking about over the summer, there was, a, there the was summer, a call There was a call for water for 30 yeah. days just to see what the plant can produce. Supposedly, you guys ran this plant for 30 days, producing somewhere around 3.5 million gallons a day, but come to find out, in some days, you barely produced a million gallons. And that information came from the water department. Well, I can double check that. I mean, I don't have, I, I have that information on my computer, but I can. Well, you know I what? Mean, it, was, it was the delivery that they requested. I believe it, won, it was June of this, of this year. And the request lasted till, I think it was August. So it was more than, than a month. And, uh, and I know we had some uh, uh, issues with the uh, with uh, with one equipment that we went down for for a couple of days, but it came back online. But I mean, I can I can double check that information with you and and uh, and get back. Yeah, if you could include that in the same documents that you're going to submit to uh, Council President here, it would be greatly appreciated. Um, also, another another question is, um, in your opinion. And I, you don't have to check the numbers. I mean, just basically rattle it off if you can. What do you think that plant is worth? I cannot say. You don't. I mean, I, I cannot. Com I, I cannot comment on that. To be honest with you. You just said to uh, Council Sullivan that you're losing Council, money. That wouldn't be part of the uh, contract. Uh, we, you could file another resolve when the time comes. About. No, I know, but I'm just. I'm just. I mean, he's the general manager of the plant. He should be able to no. know. He should be able to know how much the plant is worth. Well, he's answered you his opinion. He couldn't. You know, so maybe that's another thing you can attach to that documentation that you, I got a you're going to submit. To be honest with you, okay. Um, and you did say to Council Sullivan that you're actually losing money in terms of um, your operating cost. What is your present operating cost in the plant? In terms of the uh, of uh, of the overall project, I mean, I'm not I'm not talking about the operational cost. I'm talking because we we barely produce any. Anywhere because uh, well, there's no requests, but uh, uh, we we do we do lose money. It's actually filed every year with the DPU, and uh, the numbers are there. I mean, uh, no, but I'm I'm just saying from I know things get filed. Just like I asked you, how many plants were you know were part of that whole packaging, yes. and you're not exactly sure how many. I'm just saying, what is? Could you give us a breakdown of what your operating cost for that plant is? Uh, yeah, I can. well, I, I've, I've shared actually that, that information. No, uh, not with this body. No, 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 not with uh, here. But I've, I've shared that information with CDM, and I don't have any any problems. Uh, if it's, if it's I would actually like to see what you pay for personnel, what you pay for your, you know, since we're a partner on this and we're yeah. paying, we're making our payments every month or every year. Since we're partners on this, I like to see. Basically, you give us a breakdown exactly what you you are paying, and since we are in discussions in terms of purchasing the plant from you, I think it probably would make sense for this body to kind of know exactly what you're, um, what you're spending in terms of operating the... Uh, well, our facility. DPU report shows us exactly where our, our accounting and audited financial statements uh, show. So basically the, the two, I mean, if you, if you would like to see that, that report, uh, it actually matches exactly 
our, our internal accounting and our external accounting, our, our, our audited accounting. Well, I, I, would, I personally would like to see exactly what the Dighton plant is. No, is. no, I'm talking about the Dighton plant is actually not your, audited. Not your company, just basically what your, what your obligations are with the bank <laughs> and exactly what you're, you know, what you're ex uh, spending in personnel to run that plant in Dighton. Is there any way you can make that available to us? Yeah, I mean, the, the, as I told you, the DPU actually breaks down every single personnel, chemicals, power, everything is in there. And when can we expect to see this? I can pour you uh, a copy uh, with uh, the material that I own, the council, yeah. But when? I, I'll put it together with the, uh, you ask me for the mar marketing efforts, the production, and I'll, I'll add that, the, the DPU report to that. But we'll be able to see it in my lifetime? I mean... Through you, Mr. Chair, if I could. Counselor, Counselor what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask, uh, I'm going to postpone this, and I'm going to make a, a, a resolve. Uh, the second Finance Committee meeting in January is when we're going to invite you back here again. So we, we would need that respectfully a week before that, at least prior to that time. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. And, and thank you, Mr. Chairman. That's all I had to ask. Mr. Well done, Counselor? Yes, sir. Counselor DiNapoli. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Mr. Chairman, uh, Jay, can can you come over here for? Um, I'm going to ask Mr. Conner a couple of questions. <clears throat> First, if there's no objections, Mr. Conner was not on the original invite list for this. Any objections? Council. Thank you for the uh, the motion, uh, Jay. I, I know that uh, the city has a an offer on the table for 88 million dollars to buy this plant, and this gentleman just said it's worth about 90. Council, and try to stick to the. Uh, yeah. Okay. Contract. All right. Uh, we have an agreement with this aquaria to pay them for f what five million dollars a year no it's more than that it's it's, it's based it's a, a volume of fixed commitment times a rate and it's a second price depending on how much actual water we buy but it's more than five million right now it's about six million or so almost <clears throat> do we pay them monthly uh, oh, I think do we, we do pay them a month. year, uh, once a there's year? An annual, it's an annual value, but it's divided up into, into months. Into 12 so, months. I think so, yes. Okay. Now, I was, I'm the only counselor left on this council when we entered the contract many, many years ago under the units administration. And believe me, I think I was led into the barn in the back door when we got this contract. Because <laughs> I, I don't like it, it stinks, and we have to find a way to get out of it. They promised us a whole bunch of things about selling to other communities and nothing has been done. And we're, we absorb the whole price. Now, what, what I want to do in, uh, in January, and I think we'll, some of my con co counselors, and I was talking to Councilor Rodriguez about this, I don't want to pay them another nickel. And we'll let them take us to court over it. Well, Counselor, the obligation to pay by home rule petition, which was adopted by the state legislature on the initiative of the city of Brockton, is considered a full faith pre pledge of the city of Brockton. So it would be something I would strongly recommend against to not pay them that money. If you want to make a challenge on the, on the validity of the contract and the elements of the contract, that's not within my domain. But failing to make a payment on what's essentially a debt obligation of the city and would affect the city's credit worthiness in other transactions, including the sale of bonds, is not something I'd recommend. I have a copy of the contract at home, and it's about 80 pages long. Yeah. Now, do you believe, you were here, Jay, with me, and, you know, all the other councils that were on the, on the council back when Jack Eunice was the mayor, do you really think we got a good deal and they lived up to their end of the bargain? I don't think or, either. Honestly. In, neither party got the deal they expected is what I think, Counselor. Okay. Neither party got the deal I expected. And I will support one thing that Moises Pariente has just told you, and that is the regulations that the state imposed both on the city and on Aquaria in the sale of that water are a big problem in terms of making other sales to other communities. In addition to that, the state has never ever taken the uh, attitude toward that plant that it represents a regional asset. If they were to take that attitude, some of the other water projects which they're willing to permit by communities that need water, which don't oblige them to buy the plant, uh, stop us from getting sales. So I think as much as 
The performance of the company is in question here. I think the regulation of the state over the project and its attitude toward water projects in the southeastern part of the state is, all, is also an issue. How do we move forward with that? Well, I think we, we, need, to, we need to work at the, at the state level with respect to how they treat new water projects in southeastern Massachusetts and whether they should be allowing communities to construct sometimes with state assistance, new water treatment plants, when an alternative might be a water purchase contract from a regional plant that already exists, it would be a good, a good start on their, on their behalf, but they don't do that. we have to file a home rule petition to our state Well, it's delegation. a regulatory issue, I think, Councilor. I'm not sure if a home rule petition would do it because that's a legislative act. What you've got is a state agency which does not simply respond to this project or the plant which was constructed at risk by Aquaria with financing by the city as being a regional asset for solving regional water problems. And I think that's a fair statement. If they had a different attitude at it about this project and desalinated water uh, and water consumption per capita around the, around the state, uh, we'd be in a different position in terms of water sales. But neither party got what they bargained for when we went into this contract. And you're recommending that we buy this plant. Well, I think we're better off owning it because I think it, you know, again, we're in, I, Council, this isn't before you tonight. No, I understand that, Jay. We, he but gave us a little leeway. We've, we've, we've asked. Sale, the sale is not on the, uh, no, nobody's but prepared for The whole tonight. proposal is, Mr. Conan runs this city. He's the chief financial officer. And he. Mr. Conan doesn't run the city. He's the chief financial no. officer. He's a, okay, his recommendations. To, to buy and purchase certain items. And, Councillor, at some point I'd be willing to stand by that recommendation in front of the City Council, but right now it's before the Water Commission, and the Water Commission has asked for some operating statistics and an economic analysis, and I don't think <coughs> we've got that information yet to be in a position to make a recommendation one way or the other. What you've got is a proposal, not a request for any kind of a vote. We've, we've gone through this before. Uh, I don't mind helping as much as I can with respect to how the contract has or hasn't been run, but I don't think it's appropriate to be answering questions right now about the purchase because that's not before the council. I've not come prepared to talk on that. And okay. It's just not All a right. matter in front of you right now. All right. Council, that's what I tried to say to you. No, I, okay, that, that's fine. I can live with that. Jay, that's thank you, Mr. Conlon. This evening, and nobody's prepared for, for that, so All right. you can file a resolve. I mean, this whole thing is a mess. Right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Councilor Dubois. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, hi, Mr. Condon. Hi. So you were here, I, I won't be long, but, okay. but you were here when the contract was entered into. Yes. And so you're saying that we got something that we didn't expect. I, I think when the contract was entered into, we knew we had to do something for certain because we were under consent decree to obtain an additional source of water. The city council at the time had rejected the idea that we connect to the mass water resources. Authority. And so did you. Huh? And so did no, you. I didn't take a position on the okay, MWR. Okay, I thought you did. I didn't take a position. Okay. No, no, no. Uh, that, that was the City Council and the Water Commission. Once that was rejected, we entered into negotiations because that was the direction the City Council told the city to take with the proponents for this project. And we negotiated the best deal we could get at the time. And as a result of that, the city now has an additional source of water. It is very expensive. That we don't use. Um, well, I don't think that's quite true, Councillor. We don't How often buy water from them. Yeah. But what we do have is the exclusive right to the production capacity of that plant to a stated amount How each year. How often do we buy water from them? I don't know that answer. Yeah, because no. that's outside of your purview. Okay, so I guess my, just to get to the crux of my questions for you so we don't have to sit up here all day, I'm sorry about that. It's that at the time you certified that this was a good financial, no. you didn't certify that no. that that the home rule petition was good. What no. happened with that? The home rule petition was in order to get the project financed. That all, the only position I took on that is that without this home rule petition, we will not get our project financed and we'll be back at square one with respect to not having satisfied the consent mm -hmm. decree. With respect to the contract itself, I never gave an unconditional certification. I said that it's going to be expensive and that the cost to the city is going to depend upon how much growth in water consumption occurs in the city and how successful the plant operators are in selling to other communities, but in no case would it be cheap. That was the Could you letter. give me a copy of that certification? Sure. I'm interested If in I can it. find it, it's 10 years ago, but yeah. yeah it's it's probably in the clerk's yeah. office if you want to look there because that's where it would have been filed. I can ask him too because I'm just thinking that um, you certify like that literally that we couldn't afford no. to give people money back on um, water bills that we over build people. No, I didn't you say that. You said we couldn't afford no. it. Counselor, I have that this certification. Really, I, I'm on point. If you just give me one more second. I don't stick think the, he's running the city the council. Contract. 
Please. He may be running the city, but not the city council. Stick to the water <laughs> yeah. Councilor. So, so I guess my question is, if you, if I will ask the clerk for the certification, but we have a whole bunch of union members in the room that the city is saying they can't negotiate with because we can't afford it. But you're saying that we can afford to buy a desal plant for what, eighty-eight million dollars? We can afford that, but we can't afford to give workers. Well, a what raise. I said on that, Councilor, is that the exchange of bonded debt service for the fixed price commitment, which is an obligation that can't be avoided in my opinion, is cheaper. That's that's all I've said on that. So $88 million. The city can afford $88 million. No, Council, I didn't how say much that. Is the, how much are they asking for? I'm sorry. I'm not getting into Council, that. Council, please, Council, I, I would ask for this not no, to go to that area because contract? I haven't prepared Council, on it. If somebody wants to file a resolve concerning the sale, the proposed sale of the plant, they have the right to do so. We that is not that. on the agenda tonight. To chair, it's already been filed through Councilor Lodge Rodriguez. Excuse me? It's already been filed through Councilor Lodge Rodriguez. It's not here tonight. So that we can certainly move forward on that when that time comes. Please stick to the uh, Can I speak with Mr. Contract. Moses um, Parente? Am I saying your name correctly? Close. How do you say it? Moises. Moises. How do you say your last name? Parente. Great. So Moises, thank you for being here with us. I hope you don't mind me using your first name. So you're the, how often are you at the plant? How often what? Are, are you at the water plant? Uh, maybe four times a year, but I, I am. Great. And what was your role in the contract negotiation? Which? Uh, any, any, any amendment, what were your roles in creating the contract between the I city? Wasn't, I wasn't here when, when the contract was signed. Okay, so um, was that a predecessor of yours? What's that? Was that someone that was in your pitch position before you that had that responsibility? Was I, yeah, well, actually, it was someone from our parent company, yes. Okay, great. And so are you prepared to answer questions on the contract? Are you very familiar with the contract? Yes. Wonderful. Can you lay out for me um, what, type of, what type of payment structure the city is under right now for this year? On the you, pay, you pay for a fixed commitment. And how much is that? Uh, six million dollars, close to six million dollars. Six million dollars for this year, yep. Yeah, and then you have uh, a variable component, which is uh, actually charged uh, depending on how much were the city requests. And how much have we used so far this year? I, I don't have the, uh, I, there was a request from so June to, uh, to August, as I told you, and there was a request last month as well. We acted on it, I will refile it. And I, I don't think there was anything on the uh, first half of the year. Do you think that you could, or someone on your team could put together um, how much water the city has used this year and send me, um, or send the, s somehow transmit that information to us so we can see how much the city has ordered from you and how much you've been able to deliver? Yeah. If you could do that, I would, I would think that would be wonderful. Okay. Um, I do have a concern with the city purchasing. What, what kind of, um, in the contract, what, what, what sections deal with the city purchasing this plant from you? There is no provision in the contract. There's no provision in the contract for the city to purchase. It doesn't have a first right of refusal if you're going to sell or anything like that in the contract. I thought it did. Oh, if no, if we if we are going to sell that the asset, yes, obviously yes. But I mean, if you sell, I'm mean, I'm not sure if you're going back. So to if the you ass, were to sell the asset, there's I something. Think, I think I think you do. I will I will need to double check. I apologize. I don't I I, I don't have the contract memorized. Uh, okay, by her, so but you I mean, would have to look and see, yes. and we could look. I believe that if if you were going to sell, we would have the first right of refusal. But I think they were sold, and I don't know if the city was actually offered. The ability to purchase at that but it point. Was, the asset wasn't sold. It was sold. The the company was sold. Okay, so the so there's a difference when the yes. whole company is sold. With what was That's that? Correct. That was like um, this one desal plant was just one part of the company. Right. And how many desal plants? Are, what what comprised the company in addition to this? That's a question that I uh, that. Uh, I don't know. I came in yes. late. I'm sorry. Uh, I don't know how many plants were actually in a concession type of business, like the uh, the uh, Aquaria is, uh, how many were in operation and how many were in construction. But uh, but quite the whole company was sold. Yes. To who? To the to a group. It was actually coming from the OHL group to GS. GS. Yes. What's GS stand for? It's GS. That's, that's so DS. D or G? G as in uh, God S. S now owns um, the desal plant that you manage? They, they own the whole company. Yes, whole. And, and your role, in, and now you work for them? Yes. And so if DS wanted to sell off the desal plant, 
we would have the first potentially have the first right to purchase. Is I would need to double check that, to but I mean, if there is a first, uh, yeah, a refusal, you will have it. Yes. Obviously. But right now, are you in negotiations with the city to to sell the the plant? Yeah, but I cannot discuss that. To okay. be honest with you, sorry. All right. Um, what what? How do you interpret your responsibility to wheel the water or to sell the water? How do you interpret your company's responsibility per the contract for you to sell water? To sell water to other communities, you mean? Sure, or to anybody. To I mean, the only contract we have right now is with the city of Brockton. is 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 very clear on how we need to uh, to proceed. To be honest with you. What is that? Explain it if it's very clear. Uh, if the city re, uh, requests, uh, let's say tomorrow they need two million gallons, uh, there is a procedure where they will request the uh, the two million gallons to us, and we'll need to be ready to to produce the two million gallons, as happened, you know, the weekend on the uh, of Thanksgiving. Yes. So there's no responsibility on your part to try to find other buyers. There, there is. There was a provision on the contract, uh, which. Uh, was discussed before and uh, I'm sorry I came in late I apologize it is a 200 we had to spend uh, two hundred fifty thousand dollars before um, the uh, delivery date which uh, has come and passed yeah that that that, that was October of 2011 and it was only two hundred thousand dollars two hundred fifty thousand dollars two hundred fifty thousand dollars yes. okay thank you very much thank you thank you Councilor Councilor Stewart uh, thank you Mr. Chairperson I have a question for Mr. Condon please I have to admit that actually the last time I read the contract in detail was last year, so I'm just making certain I understand what I, I read. So my, if I read the contract, my understanding of it is that we're, this, the idea that we're paying $6.5 million or $6 million a year um, uh, for water that we're not using is, is a bit of a misnomer, right? Because the contract was set up so that the city had very little risk initially when the, when the plant was being built and that 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 early investment cost by the private sector is partly what we're paying back now in terms of the construction cost, correct? Uh, yeah. Oh, help me understand that better. If I could make a quick statement on this, Councillor. I'll try on that, Councillor. Uh, I wasn't invited on this matter. I haven't reread the contract again before this meeting this evening. I was there at the time. It's old, but I think this is the truth. I, I try to be helpful. I try to provide answers to Councillor's questions. But if I'm not directly invited and I provide information which is not absolutely correct and I get back end people say they weren't properly informed, that's difficult because I try not to be uh, uh, uninformative for the council. The way that contract was set up is that the entire risk of getting it permitted and constructed belong to Aquaria. Correct. That the city's financial obligation, uh, which was ultimately modified by a home rule petition to make one portion of it a, a full faith guarantee, the city's financial obligation was once the plant was constructed and able to deliver water, we would pay for a reservation of a stated portion of the plant's capacity, which grew from a beginning number of just under 2 million gallons a day up to just over 4 million gallons a day after 10 years and stayed there for the last 10 years of the contract. We would pay for that at a stated price which was quoted in the contract at the time that the contract was signed in 2002. They couldn't inflate that number no matter what happened to cost until three years after they started to deliver water. So for these folks, it was basically from 2002 to 2011, I think, before they could have an inflation. That's the fixed commitment, and we are obliged to pay that once they're able to deliver water every year, regardless of whether we buy water or not. But what we get for that is a guarantee that that stated portion of the plant is avail available for our exclusive use to take water from, and that they must produce that amount, that stated amount, on 24 hours notice. Second, we had the um, obligation to pay if we actually bought any of that water off that stated commitment at another rate, and that was so many dollars per 100,000 gallons, I think, that also couldn't escalate until three years after they delivered water, and that was called the variable rate because it wasn't going to be known for any given year what it would be until we, until we uh, actually ordered up the water. 
in most years, at the beginning of the, of the contract when they were ready to produce, which I think was around the end of 2008, at the very beginning we had a small amount each year that we were ordering on a regular basis. Uh, lately we haven't, it's just been on a more sporadic basis. In addition to that, the company had an obligation to do intensive marketing at the beginning. As uh, Moises said, it was measured by, it was supposed to be a quarter of a million dollars spent in marketing. Um, the city had the right to do additional marketing if it chose to, and were additional customers to be secured either by the Aquaria folks or by the city, the city had the right to do one of two things. Either we could back off from the fixed commitment volume and thereby take, which had been a more, um, a bigger reduction in that fixed commitment price, or we could reduce the fixed commitment price, I think, by half. So with water sales, the city would benefit either if we did that or they did it, and the option would be the city's, at the time the water sale was concluded, a permanent user, not an emergency user, another permanent user, the city could look at where its volumes were at the time and could decide whether we're sufficiently under those volumes that we could relinquish some portion of that exclusive capacity or we'd just be better off taking and the, the overall price. And the overall capacity of the plant was really dictated by the state, correct? Uh, the capacity of the plant was mainly dictated by um, uh, economies of scale, I think. The, the, the state said we needed to secure a new uh, water supply and that we needed to be able to do something over a 20-year planning horizon so that they could see that the population growth, which was projected for the city at the time, could be satisfied as well as the deficit in water that was being uh, created by our not being able to take the full amount that we needed out of Silver Lake. I think the basic size of the plant became one of once you decided you were going to build a plant down there, you're going to put a pipeline in place. It made no sense to build a million gallon a day plant or a two million gallon a day plant and incur that much expense to run the pipe. So I think the, the decision finally was made on their part, let's build five. The city didn't need all five. We, we contracted for something less, but I think that was the economies of scale as much as anything. Okay, then my last question, and I'm, I'm done, Mr. Chairperson, is, and then this, the fact that we are in a, a situation where there's a surplus of water it's really accounted by for two factors. One is that we repaired a lot of leaks in the pipes and we were having more rainfall <laughs> than expected. I think th there's a third factor, uh, and that is that the, um, the plant came online in 2008. Uh, the recession occurred at the same time, and the city has seen, especially um, 2009, 2010, all those foreclosures take place in the city of Brockton. As a result of that, a lot of the water consumption, a lot of the meters were being active at one, at one point were no longer active. They just weren't selling water to those meters any longer. So there was one period of time, I forget the exact year, I'm going to say 2010, where our water revenues, just based on less consumption, I don't think it was conservation, it was really uh, economics, were down by a million, uh, a million dollars a year. So, you know, that's just, you know, uh, buyers that are gone, mm -hmm. okay. which I would think would come back. Great. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chippers. Thank you. Councilor Sullivan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Connor. Mr. Parente. I, I, again, I just, I just want to make sure that we're, we're clear, uh, and you'll confirm to the council tonight. So I'm going to make a motion to postpone this, and we're going to have another hearing on this in the, the second finance committee meeting. So it would be the third Monday uh, in January. And uh, will you be able to attend that night? I think so, yes. Okay. I hope it doesn't take another seven months again to see you, though. No, and to be honest with you, and you can check with uh, with actually the people who send us the uh, the uh, correspondence. Uh, the the letters get here. I mean, get to us uh, uh, maybe at the, at the day actually that is that that we have the meeting or the prior day or a day after. So I mean, it's not it's not that we are not trying to make. Well, it the up. problem I have with that though is 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 I always have them email it as well. So the hard copy may be delayed because you're where are you based in florida yes yeah so maybe yours is but rebecca and i know for a fact because i get blind cc'd on it so i know the emails are going out timely absolutely so i'm going to ask you again if you could respectfully come back here i'd like to see uh if you could get us the materials as requested i really would like to see how you are marketing you mentioned rain of dog track tonight uh i mean uh, i'd like to see what those discussions are about i mean it doesn't seem like anything's going anywhere and maybe that's the facts, but I'd like to see really what's the proof in the pudding. How, how are you doing this? And then all my other colleagues that requested those certain documentations as well, if you can, again, you could get that to us a week prior to, so the second Monday in January would be the drop-dead date on that. You think you can get that to us? Yes. Okay, I appreciate it, sir. 
I'm going to make a motion to postpone this until the second FinCom in the January of 2015. Second. second. That appears to be January 12th, Monday evening. Uh, motion to remain seconded uh, to postpone this item to January 12th <coughs> with the attendance of Ms. Excuse me, Mr. Chairman. Chair. That, that's incorrect. That's the second Monday in January. January 19th would be the third. That would be a finance meeting. You won't meet at oh, the so city council until third, January yes. 12th. Second, second finance meeting. Second will be, finance meeting. Uh, excuse me. That will be the 20th, which is Tuesday evening. 19th is Martin Luther King. That's exactly right. Yes. The holiday. Martin Luther right. King Day. Yep. So it will be January 20th, Tuesday evening. 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock. Just so you don't come on Monday night. City Hall will be locked up. Uh, motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Councilors, there's nothing else before us this evening relative to Finance Committee. Uh, we do have a special meeting uh, at 8 o'clock tonight. Uh, so in 15 minutes, we will be meeting here again tonight, 8 o'clock sharp. We will call the meeting to order. And again, as you remember, we postponed the public. We opened it. We had uh, only one individual speak, Mr. Chris Cooney. We're going to continue that matter. So it will be opened up again tonight. Anything else before us relative um, to finance? I would just like to um, have a moment of personal privilege. Okay, Councilor. Um, I just want to announce to the folks at home, if they can't see it, that we have a whole bunch of guests here with us this evening from uh, our city unions who are here over, um, I believe, a contract negotiation stall. And I just wanted to let the residents at home know that there are some city unions that are trying to fight for a fair contract. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Council. Councilors, as you know, uh, we're sitting right now with Finance Committee, but all 11 members of the City Council sit at Fencom. Uh, but this body has always been in support of city em employees. It doesn't matter what employee, it doesn't matter what union. But this body, as long as I've been on it, uh, has always been supportive. And we will continue to support the city workers, the people that make the services day to day, people that actually put their lives on the line and sacrifice great time away from their families to make Brockton a better place to live and work. So I also want to thank you for being here. I want to wish each and every one of you and your families a happy and healthy holiday season. Thank you very much. This meeting is